staying busy over the winter, right? So you've been busy since, I mean, 2023 hurricane season was, I mean, did anything really happen last year? I mean, no, not I don't really. think so. You but had the one that managed... hit, the, hit right in the middle of the, the, the big bend of Florida that there's nothing out there but trees and yeah. alligators. And uh, that's all it did. Was that a, a Dahlia? I don't remember. Right? So how have you managed to stay busy? So, through, I mean, just, for us, just, we, you know, my, my main thing is, and, and, and we talk about this a lot, is my main thing is I do deployed dailies. You know, I mean, I just go out and help wherever is needed. So a lot of that tends to be um, the long-term, you know, residual claims that come in after a larger storm you know, plus a lot of water claims. That's what, what I see a lot of. And so just making myself available to do that type of work um, and not just focusing on one aspect of this business, be, whether it be, you know, a lot of people just, they, they just want to do cats. That's all they want to do is just chase after, you know, roof claims. And, and that's what they focus on. Um, I focus on the big picture. We discussed before large losses. I've gotten to do several of those, uh, even large losses. I wasn't even the, in the area, received a phone call and traveled to wherever the large loss was, scoped it, then came back, you know. Um, but that's what I've done to stay busy is just just dailies, dailies, dailies. Stay, you know, again, how do you stay busy during the off season? Uh, what you do during the, during the busy season is what sets you up for your off season. Um, and... Man, we we can go down several rabbit holes as far as that topic goes, but the sure. number one thing that you can do um, that sets you up for work in the off season is just communicate, network, um, be known to your managers. Just don't be the guy who takes the oh, thanks for the claims. All you do is work the claims, turn them in, and you never speak to anybody at the firm. Okay, if they don't know who you are, you're probably not going to get a call. I and mean, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, back in Arizona. Um, I reached out to a manager, you know, that uh, was with this one company that they were sending me a little bit of work here and there. They knew I was there. And whenever something came up, like, hey, James, I just got this one. Can you do this? Hey, James, it wasn't even sticking it out there to, you know, for dispatch to do it. They just had this situation came up. And so they would reach out to me directly and ask me if I would take on these more difficult claims, maybe less desirable claims. You know, we've had that conversation to to go do the one that's way out in the middle of the pucker brush somewhere that that uh, nobody wants to drive to. Um, but you take that. And when you take that, everything's reciprocal in this business. If you go out there, you kill it, you knock it out, you don't complain about it, you get turned in quickly, they're going to call you back. And that's how you set yourself up for your, your, your slow season. Your slow season will, you know, not be as slow when you set it up and just communicate, do a good job be known network. That's how you set it up. That's how I set it up. And then, you know me, man, I'm a pest. I just, I'm always calling, you know, um, calling people and talking to them. I'm traveling down the highway. I got a two hour drive somewhere. I'm going down the list of people. Hey, it's James. What's up? What's going on? What's been happening? You know, and, and staying in front of people. That's how you do it. That's how I do it. What advice would you give to Somebody who may not feel as confident doing that, who may be like, well, I don't know how to talk to people like that. I've never like networked or like gotten, done a bunch of phone work or whatever. Learn how. What would you say to those? Learn how. I mean, it's really, it's that, really that simple. You know, you, you don't have to be the most outgoing and social person in the world, but you have to at least act like you are. You know, you just, you got to find enough inside of you just to pick up the phone and call people and email people and communicate. I will tell you, email alone does not get you anywhere. Um, these managers and people at these firms, they're getting bombarded all day long with, you know, follow-ups from a carrier, uh, dealing with the people they're already dealing with. You know, if you've, if, if you're busy, you know that on any given day, you can get dozens of emails just when people are putting notes into exact analysis. And so you have all these emails coming through and when you get an email from somebody that doesn't have any current claims with you, okay, that, that they're not currently working, you know that that's not a priority right now. You know that there's not anything in that email that you have to look that's pressing. So that's going to get pushed to the side, and they're not even going to look at it. And the chances are they may have never even open it. So, so you know, again, email is not the greatest way to get work. It is absolutely not. 
unless you actually unless you've got a good relationship with them. But it, again, it's it's they're too busy to be opening up every email from 400 adjusters who are looking for work right now. It's just yeah. squeaky wheel gets the grease. You got to make the phone calls. You got to make the effort. You may go to voicemail 20 times before you finally get them on the phone. Okay. But don't stop. You just, you can't give up. People who say that they, you know, again, we've had this conversation. It's some people say, well, it sounds like sales. Well, it is sales. You're a business owner. Okay. Going out and putting yourself in front of IA firms and talking to them, that is you doing sales for your business. And, and that's, that's how you market yourself. That's how you sell yourself is by picking up the phone. So, uh, and as far as new people go again, you, you, you're not going to get work. And I see this all the time on every adjuster group on social media. Somebody says, Hey, I got my license. What's next. Okay. Um, oh, I've had my license now for three years and I can't get any work. I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, you, you don't get work in this business by the pure fact that you just got a license and you have a pulse. All right. You, you have to, you have to be known. You have to get out there. And... Now, how do you set yourself up again for work during the off season? If, if you just got your first chance last year, it was a big storm and they sent a whole bunch of people out there and, 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 you know, that was your only chance to work the whole year was that one storm. I mean, you got to knock it out of the park during that storm and you have to also communicate and get to know the managers during that storm and, you know, make your contacts. Step. The biggest way to get on the ra radar is to stay off the radar. Honestly, if, if you make your phone calls, do your follow-ups, you know, um, update your, 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 your notes. So everybody knows where the, where the claims are standing. So they don't have to pick up the phone and call you. That gets you noticed more than the guy who's constantly having to get the phone call going, where are you at? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? Why haven't you updated this? Or where, what's up with this claim? You know, you are, you are conspicuous by your absence. Right, right. So in other words, you're a, a person who is, has got their head down. They've got the, you know, even if they're brand new and they've got the, the basics kind of locked in and they have a framework that at least that they can figure out a way to get questions answered, but they're not letting their phone, their phone the fall the whole thing fall through the cracks because when if you if people don't return phone calls then it's not those, those things don't go away right then they become a right. problem so the what you're saying is is that it, instead of being becoming like a problem it becomes a resource hog that everybody's like well we got to deal with all these messes this person's making because they just don't know what they're doing or they think they know and they're just they're not doing it right because they learned from social media uh is in versus the person who's quietly closing claims over here is a solution to problems, right? They're, they're the opposite of that. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.